Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. Now today we're talking about going beyond. This is the next step in the untethered soul. We know that we are more than a body, right? More than our life circumstances. We hear that a lot here in Unity. There is that which is beyond. So beyond what? Beyond what are we going beyond? We're going beyond our thoughts our emotions, and our sensory input experiences. Okay, the human, the human experiences, what's passing before your consciousness. So why do we want to do that? Well, this is my life, this is my experience, why do I need to do that? So the purpose of doing that is so that we can break free of the hold that our psyche has on our awareness. What we've created, okay, in our internal experience that keeps us limited, that keeps our perspective focused on certain things and not open and expansive. Right? So we want to become more expansive so that we can break through into this total freedom that Michael Singer is promising us in the untethered soul. Our soul, untethered and free. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, we're willing, right? <laughs> Traditionally, this breakthrough to total freedom is called enlightenment. When people hear enlightenment, sometimes they think, okay, that's for gurus and saints. I'm not even close to that. And we just see it as an inaccessible thing since we don't have experiences that can relate to it. But let's consider what if your consciousness could take its focus off your thoughts, your emotions, your sensory experiences, if you took your focus off of that, then how could your consciousness be expanded and no longer be bound into this personal self that we're always coming up with, right? It just always seems to be there. And so it's difficult to understand this within the mental structures uh, that we're so accustomed to using. So. What Singer offers us is an allegory. So I'm gonna share some of that allegory with you of what it is to move beyond the mental structures that we've created. And he says, imagine that you found yourself in an open field, this bright, beautiful, sunshiny day like the song. Beautiful, lush, green, open field. Sun is always shining. It's a beautiful place of great light and great openness and peace. Peace. And it's so beautiful that, of course, you decide you want to live there, and who wouldn't? Right? You want to live there, and so you bought the land. And it's just this open land. So right in the middle of the open field, you design and build your perfect home. Every, every detail exactly the way that you wanted it. The home of your dreams. You wanted it to last a long time, so you build a solid foundation. You build the walls up with concrete, because concrete doesn't decay, it doesn't leak. And to keep it ecologically sound, you're very mindful of that. Very few windows and a, and a large overhang from the roof. Still, you notice when the windows are open, there's a lot of heat coming in. So you get some shutters installed and it keeps the house much cooler. It protects you, protecting the windows. And the house is really large, so you can store everything that you need in it. Whatever, whatever kind of items, everything you like, everything you need, you store in the house and you're good. You have your supplies and you're also smart enough to hire a housekeeper to clean up the house for you. So you didn't even have to worry about that. And you built a separate quarters for the housekeeper. And you wanted solitude because this is, this is your, your, you're going to really just hone in right on life and your dream and you're committed, no phones, no radio, no internet, no TV in this house. And when the house is finished, you're so excited to live there. You love the openness of this beautiful field, all the light, all the beauty, the nature that you're living amongst. 
But most of all, you're just in love with this house because really you, may, you, you picked everything and you love it. And you put yourself into every aspect of the house so it feels like you. The paintings on the wall, ah, oh, that's so me, that just really is me. The, the carpet, the linens, everything, you. You decide that you want to spend time reading and doing the writing. You always imagine that you would write and you're so happy doing this, always long to do. Then you start becoming a little uncomfortable here. It's not as perfect because you notice that the sights and the sounds of what's going on outdoors start to become scary. Well, there's bugs out there, there's wild animals. Ah, I don't know, that's wild and this I know what's here and you notice that when the shutters are shut and the house is locked it starts to feel like a fortress protecting you it's so comfortable it's so safe and enjoyable that you soon forget about the outside you're really into this inside of the house experience after all it's familiar and it's predictable and it's all within the realm of your control You've chosen it and you can make the changes. Outside, outside is unknown, outside is unpredictable, outside is out of your control. And you just have become accustomed to leaving the lights on, so you don't even notice that if the lights were all off, it would be pitch black in your house. You just leave it on, no natural light, until you realize that the lights start burning out. And once the lights start burning out, you recognize that one thing you forgot was replacement bulbs. You never ordered the replacement bulbs. You have none in your house. So you're walking around in the dark. You're living in darkness. It's taking a toll on your health and on your uh, mental health and physical health. You've become really lonely and you've become cut off from everything. And so the only comfort that you feel is the protection of the house. You know the house is going to stay solid and stable and protect you. And then one day the housekeeper has this bright idea and takes you down into the cellar and in the cellar you have flashlights, emergency flashlights. You didn't realize you had, somebody was smart enough to put them down there. And this was a turning point in your life when you found these flashlights, you started writing again, the housekeeper was reading your writing and loved your writing and you started to work together to bring light and beauty and happiness into the house. And your light that you shared with the housekeeper grew and there was love there and you even performed a marriage ceremony with each other. And compared to the darkness that you were living in, this was heaven, this was heaven. And then one day, you took a book out of your library and started reading it, spiritual book that you always want to read, you know, one of those that you say, oh, I'll read that later. You, but you got to it, you finally got to it, you're reading it. And it interested you because it talks about this radiant natural light that exists outside. More light than you can ever imagine without having to do anything to create it. And it's described as self-luminous, omnipresent light that shines everywhere all the time. And the book actually spoke about going outside going outside of the house beyond the walls that you created for yourself and it said while you are attached and enamored with the world you created to avoid darkness you will never know the abundance of natural light that is beyond the confines of your home hmm so how will you ever go outside when you're so dependent on what you created inside? Can you relate to any of that, building the walls and staying protected? So this analogy explains our human predicament, all of ours. Our consciousness, our awareness of being is living deep inside us in this artificially sealed off area. And it's so solid that no natural light can come in. And the only light that we manage to get is the light that we create ourselves. And we're so busy decorating da daily to, um, in the hope that at least 
there'll be a little light in this house where we've sealed ourselves off from the true light, the, the light that's, that's just ever present all around us. And so your visual is this, you're living in a house, you're sealed off from natural light, but you're sitting in an open field filled with light. <laughs> filled with light, and you're wondering, and why, why, why is it so hard to keep this place lit? Mm -hmm. What is your house made of? What is your house made of? And how can your walls keep you sealed inside? Well, your house is made up of your thoughts, your emotions. The walls are your psyche walling you in. And this is all your past experiences, all your thoughts, all your emotions, your concepts, your views, your beliefs, your hopes and dreams that you've collected around yourself, including above and below you. They create the conceptual world that you live in. And if you want to see how restrictive these walls are, just start walking toward them, Singer tells us. Start walking to, toward them. Start doing something that is out of your comfort zone, like maybe going to um, one of those places like, is it called iFly, mm -hmm. where, you, where you jump out and it's kind of like um, skydiving, but you're in a building and, it, and you're scared of heights. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. To go up against one of your walls. Some people is public speaking. And when I was auditioning as an, as an actor, and I went to a workshop, well, actors always go to workshops and how to audition better, because we all want to get jobs. And they, and this one person who booked a lot of jobs said, you just gotta keep going and going and going and going until you move past that wall, and it just becomes something that you're used to doing and it's not such a big deal every time you get up on that horse to audition, right? So this is what we're talking about when restrictive with our walls. So think about the kind of boundaries that, that you put up. Like I think about if I came tonight and I didn't take a shower and I had my PJs on and no makeup, I'd feel differently inside <laughs> sitting up here in front of you. I there would be discomfort, okay? So instead of avoiding our walls, we walk right towards them, Singer says to do, that the closer you get, the more you're gonna wanna pull back from whatever it is you're afraid of doing and intimidates you or what have you. That these are the fears that create a prison inside of you because they put boundaries around your awareness. When you approach this barrier of your thoughts and emotions, it will feel like an abyss, like there's just darkness beyond whatever it is that you want to step into, your dream, your relationship, whatever it is that feels like there's a barrier there. And you don't want to go there because there's darkness there, but what there really is is not darkness there. There's the walls that you put up there that are blocking the infinite light that's there. It's just the walls that you've created. So if you see a wall that's blocking the light, you will want to go to remove the wall. And Michael Singer says, it's often said that you must go through the darkest night in order to get to the infinite light. So you may find that uh, sometimes I have the experience that I feel like it's pile on. <laughs> It's just all this stuff happening all at once, and boy, would I not want it to happen at once, all together, at the same time. <laughs> this is wow, and okay, this is my growing edge, and I will not stop and quit. I will continue to go and move through that and grow, and uh, sometimes I need my spiritual director to remind me that I need to do that. <laughs> so like, oh, no, I don't, I, I, I'm comfortable here in this thing that I'm doing now, and now I'm doing something else. Uh, like this show that I'm doing, I'm playing Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd in, in rehearsals, and when I do theater, like this is the second show that I've done in a long time since I became a minister. I wanted to do it. I love this role. 
and stuff comes up from when I was an actor and like, oh, I get it why I'm doing this. I'm not do only doing this because it's fun. I also have some more stuff I need to heal. <laughs> so <laughs> there it is. Okay. And I get to heal it rather than say, I don't want to look at that. I'm out. So, ah, okay. I, I can notice where I have feelings of inadequacy that show up and when I do a certain thing that I wouldn't normally be doing if I wasn't doing that, right? Okay, there it is. And that's a wall that I've created and I don't want that wall to get in the way of me shining my light and living the life that I want to live. So breathing through it, being with it, journaling, praying, a lot of praying. Ah, so we must go past these walls and freedom involves moving out of your comfort zone. You can either devote your life to staying in your comfort zone, which many people do, or you can work on your freedom. It's either or, it's not both. You either work on your freedom or just really work hard to stay in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so Singer gives us this example. It's like a, trying to keep your dog in your backyard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so in the old days, you'd put up a fence, right? You'd lock the fence, you'd put up a fence. But now you don't need a fence because everything is electrical and you can just bury wires and put a little collar on your dog. And so when the dog gets to the place where the dog is not supposed to go, the dog gets a little zap in the collar. The dog thinks, hey, I'm free. I used to be inside a fence. This is great. I'm going to go. And then once the dog gets to that boundary, there's a zap and the dog jumps back and barks because this is uncomfortable. This doesn't feel good. What is this? Why'd they set me up like this? I don't know if dogs think that, but <laughs> we do, right? And it's so uncomfortable that the dog starts to fear that boundary where it is. The dog doesn't want to be zapped. However, let's say we're dealing with a dog that is determined, doggedly determined perhaps, to be free. This dog wants to be free, so this dog is willing to get a little uncomfortable. And you see that the dog is sitting right where his collar starts to vibrate. Wow. Just right near the boundary where the collar starts to vibrate and he doesn't back off. He just stays there in the discomfort. And then every minute, once he can handle that, he gets a little closer and a little closer so he can get used to that force field that's there that's trying to keep him in. But since it's an artificial boundary, right? There's no real fence there, it's just that sensation he realizes that the collar won't kill him. It won't actually hurt him. It's just a little uncomfortable. And if he can withstand that discomfort, he can be free to come and go as he will. See? Most people just stop trying, right? Mm -hmm. They just stop, oh, that's a little comfortable, I don't want that, and stay over here. Singer says, spirituality begins when you decide that you will never stop trying. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. That's when spirituality begins. So if you're really comfortable in your practice and you're not feeling uh, on the edge, you're not feeling like you're, you're being pushed beyond your comfort, that's not spirituality, according to, to Singer here. When you approach your edges, you will feel insecurity, possibly jealousy, fear, or self-consciousness, that all those kind of things will naturally show up because here we have the ego trying to protect itself and keep you safe. Spirituality is our commitment to go beyond no matter what it takes. If, there, if you had a laser beam and you shot it out into space, it would go on into infinity, except if there's a boundary put there's some kind of wall or something put in the way of it. And we're infinite and we just create our own walls to limit that infinite energy. So when you're truly going beyond, you're always at your limits and you're never in your comfort zone. That explains a lot uh. for me anyway. I was like, oh, thank you, Michael A. Singer for, for um, helping me know what, why I I feel that way, like, okay, I like to think that this is me moving in the right direction. Uh, that's, that's how I, I feel anyway in my heart. This is how great li beings live. 
He says, this is how great beings live, always beyond their comfort zone. And this is where you'll find true freedom and fall into the infinite. As you keep moving in that direction, you fall into the infinite. And this is what it means to go beyond. Namaste. Mm -hmm. wow. Smart dog. Yeah, <laughs> brave dog. <laughs> really? I think my beagle probably would have done that. Think so? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about my, I have a, a Pomeranian Papillon mix and uh, I'm not sure. Well, she is pretty feisty. You never know. She may accidentally push through. You know, yes, I mean? she <laughs> would just blindly go. You know, it's like whoop, and then get through it. You know, and then it's like, hey, I'm on the other side now. This is awesome, and it doesn't hurt. You know, uh, see you later. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 beautiful, beautiful way of presenting our interior world and how we live. I mean, the, the metaphors were great and the descriptions, thank you so much for that. Um, while you were walking us through it, I was, you know, trying on different things, you know, like where am I in that and how does that come up for me? And um, what, I, what I have recognized <laughs> is that there really is no such thing as being able to be in this zone, <laughs> I haven't found that where there are there's no provocation, you know, <laughs> where where it really is like like I don't really have the power to maintain equanimity and you know uh, this this stasis kind of thing in my life. Now I may have that illusion. I may have habits certainly. And I certainly want to, you know, I want things I can depend on. I like things to show up the way I want them to so I can be thinking about other things I want to think about. And I don't have to think about my daily tasks and routines and all that kind of thing. But life itself is just predicated to upset the apple cart all the time, right? <laughs> Um, I know I don't live in that world by myself, and I know I didn't call it to me necessarily, exactly, maybe, sort of, <laughs> and maybe uh, it was what I didn't face before, and now it's coming around again. I mean, it's okay, some of that. But I I'll just tell you that we really don't have the luxury of hiding out from life. We have to make a decision every time. Now, we can make the decision to, I sometimes make the decision, I'm not up for it. <laughs> no. I'm not up for that right now. And if I can hide out, I want to. But a lot of times, I'm kind of the dog. You know, I have learned, because of my um, uh, numbers of years of doing this, that th it really only hurts a little bit for a while. You know, it only hurts for a while. It won't, will not kill me. And it will, um, it's uncomfortable. And I'm pissed off that I have to do it, perhaps. <laughs> but at the same time, once I realize what it is, I also know the, I, I know the reward. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. I know, I don't know how this is going to manifest, and I don't know how it's going to reward, and I don't know what missing piece in my world is it going to open up that I didn't know I needed or that I didn't have. But what I do know is that it is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. That everything comes to benefit and add up, and freedom is the goal. Freedom is just to be able to open up to all possibilities and run in the field naked is really the thing, you know? It really is. And so whatever we can do to play with that is so worth it, you know? Yes. And so as soon as we can get our team, I love it that you said your spiritual director is, works with you, to have somebody who you can check in with who knows you and knows your thing and knows your stuff to help, help you see what this really is, so you know what your choices are. Yeah. And you know what you're choosing or not choosing. And that's enormous, because that could take a lot of bumping into a brick wall before mm -hmm. you'd figure it out. 
So that is always something we want to be able to do is have somebody with us. But, oh my God, this is a glorious thing. And we really don't get out of here without bumps and bruises mm -hmm. and broken hearts and missing teeth. <laughs> <laughs> all, kinds of, all kinds of mess we wouldn't have wished for or wanted. So. Yeah. Sorry for the soliloquy, but I, I was wanting to process for me what you said. Thank you. Yeah. And if we don't deal with it, it's just going to show up again in another way. When I was in ministerial school, they told us, don't leave a church because there's somebody there in your congregation you don't like, because the next church you go to, they'll be there in a different different outfit, different haircut, be but there they will be. Yes. Yes. And so I remember, okay, well, you can't, you, you want to um, not be running away, you want to be going too, if you ever move uh, into another experience, but that the running away doesn't ever really get you away from that situation that you're trying to stay in your comfort zone around. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciated your framing it that uh, life is going to continue to provide opportunities, uh, regardless of how enlightened or how comfortable your house gets. Because uh, I was thinking about it, you know, we, we can't be aspirational and, re and resolved and content at the same time. You know, we're kind of like the, the, the dog chasing the bunny around the track, and mm -hmm. we, what if we catch the bunny? Then it's like, the chase is over. But life won't, doesn't really participate like that. What I'm a little bit perplexed about, though, in what you're saying, um, and I, I guess I'm just wrestling with acceptance a little bit, the, the, the sheer logic of what you're saying is, is that to be free, you must be uncomfortable. That, it's in, that, that they're a package deal. You know, if you're going to break beyond your boundaries, you have to approach your discomfort and get beyond that. But listening to you talk, you know, about uh, the help of a spiritual guide and, you know, that life, it's sort of, it's part of the social contract of us being here. Um, it's less about um, not experiencing the discomfort, but not being as uncomfortable with the discomfort. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a semantics challenge there at some point, but as opposed to it being uncomfortable and therefore to be avoided, it's uncomfortable and familiar. It's like, oh yeah, this is what it's like to grow beyond whatever it is that I was being limited by. Yeah, well now your self-awareness is up because you've done it before and up oh, there's a discomfort. I'm growing through that uh, rather than, ooh, there's a discomfort, I'm afraid I'm going to run away. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I, you know, I, I, I process that for myself too and, and a lot of times it's, it's I find I suffer, I create more suffering for myself by what I make it mean, no. you know. For me, I, I'll just say, Oh, just when everything was going great, and this mess had to happen, and oh, it's awful, and my floors have to be replaced. And I know they're gonna they're gonna pay for it, but still, you know, oh, I just suffer, and sometimes I just have to go ahead and get it out. You know, I just I don't I'm just I mean I otherwise I don't know what to do with it. You know, so like I got blah blah blah. And then once that's out, then I can kind of reconcile and then I can accept. And then I see, again, it didn't hurt. It's not going to kill me. There could be a gift in this. <laughs> I actually do have to have my floors replaced because our next door neighbor had a leak and, and the hole flooded. And the wall we share came up, it went in. It, now our entire floor of the downstairs has to be replaced. And I'm just like, Ugh. and my husband was beaming when he found out that they had done that, and the, and the reason is because <laughs> he says, and they're going to replace everything, and it's going to be free to us, and he just thought it was wonderful, and I'm I'm just like, what, you know? Well, and so I'm falling down, and then he said, I said, wow, why are you so happy? He goes, I don't know why. You're, you want to make a big deal about this. You're going to get a brand new, it's going to be better than before. I said, what if it's worse, you know? And then, and then I said, 
why are you so happy? He said, because I don't have to figure it out and I don't have to make it happen. And, you know, it's like it was going to be done for him, so his job was over. <laughs> and he doesn't care about how much of a trouble it is and where everything is going to go. I like order in my world. So I'm going to do the suffering for both of us, apparently, <laughs> um, because that's our apparently our agreement in marriage. But um, I will say that I will reconcile it, and I will find the blessing, and we can easily have the happy ending that he's really seeing and I am willing to have and I'm grateful really that it isn't going to cost us it wasn't our fault and everything is going to be better maybe than it, was, than it was before but that you know that's what life is life is constantly throwing curves at us you know but Karen when, when you notice that you're suffering and yeah. you're you're spinning out I, I, know, I know you well enough, and I've actually heard you describe this story. I knew, as you were telling it, that it was a story. It's like, I am so enjoying my suffering, you know? And, um, and when you have done it enough, and you can kind of be a witness self to the experience, it's really enjoying the show. It's just like, wow, look at me spin out, you know? And it's not even that it has gravity to it. Right. It's just a, it's a sense of humor. And as you've referenced, it's a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I would argue it's valid, you know, as long as we don't identify with it. That was another takeaway that I wanted to just bring in, uh, mm -hmm. just uh, in conclusion here is, because you, there were an allegory, you know, there were so many different places to identify, you know, in the open field, in the building of the walls, and the fear, and the, and even in the, physical things, there, there, it was rich, you know, there were lots of places, and it really, I, I noticed, it, it also fits into this um, kind of conundrum about are we in pursuit, or are we settled, are we comfortable in our comfort zone, or this isn't good enough, I need to aspire, I need to break through, or whatever, it's where do I, where do we identify, do we identify with our growth, do we identify with our achievement? Do I, we identify with our relaxation and our comfort and maybe even our calcification of that? And you can't identify with something that's moving and that's fixed at the same time. And the fixed thing becomes the house. You know, even our consciousness, like, oh, I'm enlightened now. You know, <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to suffer anymore. I'm going to see that. That's fixed. It's, and, and so in order to identify with the eternal, we have to identify with the movement, yeah. with the change. And, and it's slippery, <laughs> you know, it's, it, that's its whole nature, is it's changing. And, and hence, spiritual guidance, I mean, conversations about it, a little music, you know. Yes. <laughs> and stay in the flow. Community to support each other. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the other thing you say about the allegory that I was noticing was that the other option that we do have is that while life is relentless and while it'll keep knocking at the door and it'll keep knocking the door down if necessary, that we can dysfunctionally keep compensating mm. and not growing. Mm. That we can just simply get that I'm not supposed to leave this house. Mm -hmm. This house is supposed to be, my supposed to be's and my meaning making can actually make this a prison for me mm -hmm. that I will never escape from. And I will so long forget that there was ever light outside that I aspired to have because now the, 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 the life I've lived is now to keep everything as it is. Mm -hmm. To be so invested in not changing anything within my power even though things are relentless i suffer but i also shore up whatever mm. i can and i paper it down or i build it higher and i get smaller and smaller mm. and isn't that awful but you know there's a breaking point and usually it's a nervous breakdown mm -hmm. you know it's usually something traumatic and cr cr crisis you know mm -hmm. has to come to break those things down we call them addictions we call them all kinds of different habits and, and places where we have 
papered ourselves into a corner that we can't get out of. And, and it can be subtler. It can be it just in the form of communication from a friend mm -hmm. uh, or, um, you know, or, or a neighbor, or, you know, or just an acquaintance. Because we don't know what we don't know. And sometimes it takes a breakdown. It takes a, you know, knock on the door, metaphorically speaking, and sometimes literally, to, like, make us aware, you know what, you're living in a house that doesn't have a door, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and you kind of get rattled around and then discomfort, so what? You know, it's just kind of, you got to deal with it. And that's then where uh, counsel is especially, is essential, you know, mm -hmm. is somebody just to hold you up while you kind of repair yourself. <clears throat> right, and help you find what you have, which you can choose. That, that you're really not, you're really not a victim. You really mm -hmm. have power you forgot you had. Mm -hmm. It's that facing the unknown. Well, I don't know what's beyond my normal pain process. There's another way to be. Um, yeah, it helps when you have friends and, and colleagues and spiritual guides and things that have been down that path ahead of you. Exactly. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.